Man, real life street stars. Hold on, man. We got a real, real situation in this. Uh, uh, screens fall like rain Why and my, my trunk, trunk shake, shake like thunder. thunder. Politics. Call, Call Jesse Jackson, Jackson cause, cause I just dragged my bumper. Politics. Hold on, he said oh, politics. Oh, oh, politics. Oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That been politicking before politicking, man. We got it. They didn't know, yeah. Hey, yeah, 50, politics, 50 twin back on the couch, man. Um, rest in peace, George Floyd. Yeah. For, yeah, rest in peace, George Floyd. For those that don't know, man, uh, you kind of one of the ones that really started Real Life Street Stars Reign. So first and foremost, I want to say thank you for coming back. We always tell people, man, don't get too lit to forget. Sure, sure. We don't forget who kind of got us to where we at. Man. And you was on the old couch. You go back and watch the old couch. Yeah. Bless us with a throw freestyle, chopped and screwed it and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now he back on the couch, man. Look. And my boy Rob off the block, one of his favorite sayings is, I do it again. I do it again. God yeah. damn it. Nah, for real, for real. Yeah. Man, pulled up, man. Shout out uh some people in the goddamn building, man. Uh uh no, shout out for those that don't know, man. Um, you know, it was a relationship with uh Charlie Moe that you had that got you through us. For um, sure, my bro Charlie uh, Moe. Rich yeah, Life yeah. Dynasty. We had you had did the Rich Gold video uh, uh for the Rock for Rock movement. Yes, sir. You went crazy on that motherfucker, yes, man. You know what I'm saying? It was called it was the I'm Gold video. I'm yeah, Gold, yeah, yeah. yeah. With me and Celebrity and uh, you know, Goldie did the DJ. Yeah. My boy Manny Minnesota, you know. What yeah, saying? yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it, it was a beautiful thing that you even yeah. came from the age to come down here, even shoot that motherfucker again. A beautiful event, but we got you on the couch, man. And uh, you're looking good, you're feeling good, man. I can, I can feel the energy out of you, man. It's you, you that, good right? energy right now, man. I see it no other way. I see it no other way. You know what I mean? It's uh, it's it's. It's what's it's 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 it's, it's internal. It's, it's internal. internal. Yeah, you can't fake it. Yeah, yeah. And it's only right that we have you um after we just got uh you know uh uh big Unk man came through J Dog. What's his name? J Dog uh, uh My big brother Unk. from another mother. Brother from another mother. My brother who got this same forty five ag tattoo at Dago's with me. Come on. My man. brother who stood on that Gulf Bank block with me. Young man. My brother who one day said, hey, man, I'm going to put up a pistol and you put up the crack. And then he saw me the next day and I had my crack and had his pistol back. My brother J-Dog. Come on, man. Shout hey, out J-Dog. Came boss through. Boss Hog Outlaws. Boss Hog, boss hog fucking Outlaws. Um, Original. Let's do it like this, man. For those that don't know, some people may not have watched that original interview with us. Um, and some people may even want to know, uh, man, 50 50 twin, who is that? Uh what what what, what do you know the young kids out here ain't don't quite know they they who don't who don't know their history. Okay. Let's give them some game, man. Um uh, 50 50 twin in the building. Uh remind, remind what part of what part of Houston do you reside? Did you are you from? Okay. The notorious Acres Home. Acres Home is uh it's a, it's it's one of the largest hoods in Houston. Facts. Being that when the soldiers came from the war, they would give them acres. So we have history in Acres Homes. The biggest hood. We 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 the cowboys. We the cowboys, man. You know what I'm saying? North side. Oh man. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Acres let's go and do it like this, man. Um, and let's just jump, let's just jump in the conversation, man. Uh, you know, as we talk to J Dog. Mm -hmm. He said the North Side, when it came to this Houston music, he said, man, bro, at a time when we was really trying to, uh, you know, uh, from uh, school. Evolved from the school. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, from what the North Side was bringing, Slim Thug really brought that movement in as far as just that, that um, you know, that. That that look, that hustle, that flow. Okay. okay. Um, what would you say to that when it comes to like that? Put really stamping for the North Side when it comes to the Boss Hog movement, okay. Swisher House back with uh when Screw was doing his thing. As far as the North Side bringing they they sound in, who would who would you give that crown to? As far as just giving that sound to the North Side. Okay. Well, I got to give it to my predecessors. Let's go. KB Street Military, mm. you know what I'm saying? Trinity Garden Cartel. Yeah. You know what I mean? Willie D, Scarface, yeah. Fifth Ward Boys. Talk about it. You know what I mean? Um, Scarface is from South Acres, but but as far as him being a rapper lot, that was a that was a north side base. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, as far as the Swiss House and coming from the school era, uh, Don Key is who, <laughs> who, who, who who I idolized. Don Key. So so Shout my out Don Key, my style came from Key Key. Yeah. You know what I mean? And without no Kiki and Fat Pat, I wouldn't be draped up and dripped out. You know Man. what I'm saying? So, 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 but, but as far as the North Side and then and, and bringing that North Side, when, okay, the South, we was, they more so phase, the North, we more so braids. We roll blue, they roll red. Yeah. Uh, I can say, as far as the new generation, Thug Boss, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. As him being a young, a young teenager, you know what I'm saying? Um, jumping out of drop tops, playing with 80,000 in high school, making that braid and them grills. 
you know what I'm saying? Hey, Thug, he, he stayed on Homestead, but he also stayed on Gov Bank. Gov Bank was our block. Gov Bank, me, Mario, J Dog, we all on Gov Bank. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I said, we're going to call this Hollywood. I accidentally started the game. And oh, I'm going to say that. We Man. made the game fouls. <laughs> so, so, but, but I say that because when Michael Watts came from Homestead and we had the Selected Sounds Music Store, Michael Watts would drop the CDs off on our block. So, our block was crunk. With with uh with, with celebrity, you know yeah. what I mean? Because we have one of the most uh notorious schools, uh I can say uh a prestige school, Eisenhower High School. Mm. You know, uh this is a school that uh you would probably see Beyonce come to at times. She would come to the prep rallies, uh Miss Brown, House of Browns, you know what I'm saying, that would do her cosmetology school. Yeah. Then you um you had uh we we were the Capitals. I was on step team with Mr. Leonard, L S U. Shout out. Uh so, so uh, we we had a lot of potential. My boy Kedrick James, we uh, you know, it, we, we had so much potential. Little Mario was there. Yeah, it was so much potential, you know. And um, but as far as your question goes, I would say Thug Mario and J Dog were the three that started the Swisher House. And when they we heard them in the tapes, they were speaking for the North. Okay, we, we, you know what I'm saying? They gave us voice. Okay. Okay. And then, and then you know, I got the call, and AD say, "Hey, Big Watts want to holler at you." Big Watts want to holler at you. Yeah, yeah. The rest is history. So, uh, for those that I mean, again, you know, your catalog speaks for itself. I don't, you know, I tell people uh, if ever they want to see what Fifty Fifty is about, uh, he has the greatest hits out there on YouTube. Sure. Uh, go, just go through that motherfucker. Smoke some, pull up some, and just ride through, and you're gonna oh, see. They can say, "Hey, Google." Who is 50 50 twin? Or they say, hey, Alexa. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, but, uh, I see, uh, Rayface, Slim Thug's brother. Yeah, shout out, me, Rayface. Shout out to my bro, Rayface. He, uh, one day he told me, say, twin, record 23 flows for me and I'm gonna put it out. He said, what you gonna call it? I said, I'm gonna call it MOE. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I, see, I hesitated because I heard Wayne, I heard Lil Wayne say MOE before on one of his flows. He's like, MOE. And I heard Jesus say, M-O-E, you ain't part of the program? Yeah. And I could turn around and show you my nigga and say, M-O-E, that's since 1998. You know what I'm saying? So so I'm I'm sure, as as sure as I was going to Atlanta, you know, delivering CDs and distributing, they M-O-E kind of came from my situation because I was M-O-E back in the gap. But as far as my albums, when Ray Face said, record those songs and he knocked on my door, and I'm hustling, and I'm doing, and I'm doing flows. With you know, I'm going to road comedian now. When he gave me that ten thousand mm. dollars, and said, "Hey, fool, I'll be back with some more." I said, "I want to do this myself." And I learned the distribution business. So mm. shout out to Rayface. Shout I out to Rayface, man. He said, "I learned the distribution, man." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So this conversation you about to have, man. This is again. Uh, we are all fans. You know, we Dallas and Houston has a, a kinship that you know Surely. the music that y'all put out. We gravitated towards the music that we put out, you know, uh, got down to H-Town. Um, so we're, we're going to be moving around on this conversation. I got to ask you, um, you know, one of your iconic flows, uh, you know, before the world heard, heard Still Tipping with Mike Jones, uh, Paul Wallen, uh, uh, yeah, Thug, yeah. it was uh, the Kappa, before the Kappa, it was the Kappa, you know, Ooh. you... Thug, uh, chameleon, and you know, oh, wow. Lou Hawk, yeah, yeah, Lou Hawk. Hawk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody got on that hoe and on. Wow. It's funny because right now we've seen a resurgence in uh, I think um, Hulu's about to drop a Freak Nick '94 documentary, mm. and some people who was there for the Freak Nick '94, you know, 30 years ago, seen what that was. A lot of them don't know about the Kappa Beach party. Um, for you yourself, yes, sir. Uh, how when the Kappa was going down, like when it was at its height, how old were you back then? How would you say? Well, well, the Kappa actually started like 93, 94, exactly. And, um, you know, I hit I hit the block, you know, when, when um, I hit the block when I was 14, 15. You know, when I, when I say that, I mean, my T Jones found the cigar box in the, in the closet. And my brother forgot to jump the cigar and she said, Get out since y'all want to be grown. That's when I hit the block, yeah. But, uh, on 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 Kappa time, most of the hustlers would go to go to the Kappa Beach party, and, and one and and I I stayed one year. It was like man, since they gone, I can make more money, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and you stayed back home while they gone. I stayed at home. Oh, you I, smart. In one of my Swiss house folks, I was like, I ain't gonna lie, Mr. Block. I probably could have sold a whole bird rock for rock. That was your time to capitalize because when the, when the big homies. Phone, you know, is waiting at the Kappa. <laughs> they licks coming looking for him. So uh, you, you probably have a have a two thousand, three thousand dollar day. But but as far as the Kappa, man, um, 
I remember me, Ray Face, we was in the blue drop. You know, that's why I say Ben Dan, the little Teddy by day go. You Come know what I'm saying? Now. I'm in the back. Uh, I think Slim had a bunch of skirts. We was the blue line, little O. He, he in the drop bin, uh, drop bins. You know, and, and you see so so many African Americans congregating. Yeah. You didn't have you didn't have uh, police harassing things of this nature. You know, and, and you know it, it, it was more so girls gone wild, the black addiction. But by the same time, you know. Um, it, it was it was something to do. It was it was a platform for all of us to come on Galveston Street, yeah. and um, the music was the soundtrack to that setting. That's facts. So, so when Watts was like, "Hey man, if we do this Kappa CD, yeah. and then we would do the after the Kappa, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, it, it was, was a soundtrack. Great. Move out the way, two story house in Gateway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, you know, and so so uh, we we created the soundtrack for a lot of centuries, and and the Kappa was one of them, and it's one of the most grand events. You know that happened in Texas. Did you go Andrew. out there while you while it was at the height of before the Kappa, then after the Kappa? Were you still hitting the Kappa back then? Like you, well, you, well, you personally? Me personally? Uh, once again, T Jones kicked us out at fifteen. I was more, I was, I was more focused on on, on the hustle. Yeah, getting and, the money. Um, you know, I would as as far as going to different places, I'd probably go to Daytona. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'd probably go, you know, with with, with my D boy partners or my Jamaican plugs. But but as, as far as the Kappa. I really, I'm, you know, at, in that in that mind frame, yeah. me me partying me partying on that level was wasn't wasn't you know that wasn't my focus. It was more so hustling. There you go. There you go. But, but as far as music and promotion and being on the scene with Man Hatter, Paul and Cam, that took me to the capital. Oh, with Slim and, and Ray, that took me to the capital. Definitely, man. Again, one of the most iconic flows that uh you know the the this third coast scene as yes, far as sir. when you when you popped your shit on. So let's do it like this, man. For uh for those that don't know, man, you was a big part of uh, uh Camilitary. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, shout out to Cam- Chameleon. Uh, you know, definitely uh, so. uh definitely um one of the uh one of the when they say like when it comes to lyrics and spitting bars, I think you and Chameleon probably neck and neck if if those that don't know you know i don't know let's talk about it because i'm curious when it came to writing just spitting flows uh-huh. um whose neck were you were you going at comedian's neck well, i mean who was your who was your competition well i want to say this okay me cam and paul wall we were a rap group in seventh grade Okay, yeah. And I, I talk about it in my, my book, Miracle on 50 50 Street. It's a, it's a motivational book. Miracle know? on 50 50 Street, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, me, Paul, and Cam, we, we were in Reside, we were a rap group in seventh grade. And this was around the time uh, Cam, uh, Cam, you know, he, he would draw us on a poster. And that was our first album cover. He's, he's artistic. Cam was actually drawn back Very then. artistic. Okay, Still yeah. To this day. And, um, so he so, drew the color changing lizard. That's his drawing. That's his drawing. Wow. And, and now those. those uh, Parking lot pimping, Swiss house, that's, yeah. that's chameleon that's drawing. Uh, Homer yeah. Pimpson, all that? Homer Pimpson, that's chameleon that's drawing. God damn, okay. Yeah, yeah. Very artistic. He, he, can do a, he can do an art gallery and, and sell out. Nigga. Very artistic. <laughs> he can draw this scenery in 3D. But um, me, Paul, and Cam, I was a little stash and shorty. Chameleon that was payroll, still is to this day. Paul was overflow, and Rizak was midnight thug. So, so uh, as far as the uh, our first time recording, on uh, recording, uh, Chameleon would call me on the phone and say, Twin, I'm finna uh, record you. I'm finna play the beat. You know, we looped the beat off the radio station, record it on tape, and then Cam would press record on his answer machine and say, Twin, say your verse. So uh, me and Cam, were, were, we were in the same class in eighth grade. So yeah. our English teacher said, I need y'all to write a poem. I made an 89, he made a 100. He was talking about Shaquille O'Neal stomping through the floor, breaking the glass, and he made he wrote in so much detail. I was like, ah, uh, <laughs> yeah. this, this guy. Yeah. But, but uh, still to this day, as far as rap spar partners, uh, Cam has always been my, my, my challenge. You know what I'm saying? It's like uh, I tend to upgrade according to who I'm around, you know? Yeah, and, 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 facts. But, but uh, for the record... I call Killer Carter Young sharpshooter. Mm. Cam and Killer Carter Young are my hardest challenges, lyrically. Shout out Killer, because, yeah, he go in like a motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, I ain't going to lie. Lyrically, y'all are there, but I ain't going to lie. Um, When it comes to baller rap, when it comes to spitting that, just that high echelon baller oh, rap, I think, I think you might have the, the crown in all of H-Town. Man, I want to say drip. <laughs> 
<laughs> Lil Bro, Sauce Wizzle. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Shout out Sauce. He's carrying the torch. You know what I'm saying? He everywhere they never there. But I can say in the early 2000s, as far as ball rap, I was the fly guy, you know what I'm saying? Wash my face in with Sachi Sink, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Get my house clean by Mary Poppins Poppy with a trunk pop in the bumper drop. drop in. In. Yeah. Nationwide is how I think. think. Medicine nice is what I drink. You know what I'm Come saying? Come on now. So, so, so as far as that goes, I can honestly say my lifestyle, if Tom on MySpace had the whole record video, put it up on the picture. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Now we, I was young, the Range Rovers and all that, 90 lakhs, hopping out on MLK and all that. Yeah, the way I just you- didn't have no pictures to show that. Yeah, to, 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 to have a nigga visualize R. Kelly grabbing a drop bins or shooting yeah. dice with Chelsea Clinton. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, it just, the way you had a nigga visualize some of the ball and shit, I'm like, nah, this nigga making too much money out there in H-Town. What the, you doing yeah, all that, yeah, nigga? Yeah. <laughs> you got and, that kind and, of and you know what? The, the thing is, it's like at the Kappa. One day, uh, Paul was like, hey, my boy Omar finna pull up. You know what I'm saying? And Omar was a Jamaican. You know what I'm saying? Omar pull up in the range. Omar done been state to state. And he was like, hey, my you. You remind me of my family back home. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Omar gangster. Yeah. He locked me in. Omar, you know what I'm saying, became my situation where he said, you know, I drive on the highway. I was like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Speed in the left, chill on the right. He said, who taught you that? <laughs> but 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 and then when you get back, he was like, hey, you know how much money in the bag? I was like, say it's 300000 You know what I'm saying? Good driving. So so I'm saying, as a teenager, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Get to it. And, you know, get we ain't going to elaborate. But, but at the same time, <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, get to it. Yeah. Get to it. That so, way. So I have to ask, and uh, this is just if you could clear the rumors or either say how you want to say it. Um, The chameleon there, did he write for Paul Wall? Not at all. Okay. Not, not at all. Let's clear those rumors up. Got not them. at all. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and Broski, you know what I'm saying? The, the Iceman, Paul Wall, I can honestly say Paul has always been the one to network. I was there when he gave Lil John his grill. I was there when he gave Shingy his grill. What's the new saying? He understood the assignment. There you go, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and I admit, you know, you know, Camille now, he, he's more business minded. Yes. You know, he goes to his hotel after the show, he's gonna be on the computer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Making the next $10,000, $20,000. He say, he say, uh, I only made about 10 J's today, but he said, I only made about, about 10, 10 G's, G's today, today, but I, what, what can, can I, I say? say it's it's been, been a good day. <laughs> Come on now. True story. True story. But, but, uh, as, as far as writing for Paul, Nathaniel, not at all. Now, facts, there was a situation where, uh, me and my brothers, we was at a club in Arlington called Steppers, and, uh, it was back when people, back when a lot of niggas in Dallas thought Paul Wall was either black if they never met him, and when they met him, they thought he was Mexican because he was braided up. Mm -hmm. They was like, he was the guy coming after the show to talk to niggas. Uh, Cam, he, he, he yeah, he evasive. He yeah, yeah, yeah. he off to the left. He off yeah. to the left. Yeah. So, with that being said, um, you know, with within the military, and uh, you know, I want you to be able to touch on this as you with know me now. And my brother Razak, military. Yeah, you know? I have to ask you with Razak. Um, I ain't gonna lie, I was at a situation in Tyler, Texas. Yeah, yeah. In which uh, Razak and Paul and the whole situation kind of went down with the chain. And I felt like that was a moment. This was, of course, before Paul, or right when he got back with Switch House during the Mike Jones era. Now all that shit was I at recall. his. I and I was like, um, that right there was a moment where I felt like um, that kind of cemented when people was hoping that things get back right. It kind of said, yeah, that kind of put a line, put the division, division, like really, because I that's understand. you know Cam's younger brother. And um, for that, for you, for you hearing, I, I'm sure you weren't there because again. I, we was out there and we we kind of heard what was going on. Was what were your thoughts when you heard about the Paul Wall Rajak situation that might that went down out in Tyler, or whatever, or wherever it was? I forgot. What, I think it was Tyler or Tara. Well, well, you know, uh, Paul, Cam, Rajak, you know, being being that they stayed in the same neighborhood and where you grew up, childhood friends, and I'm you know they're in Inwood Northwest. I'm in Inwood North. Well, I'm on Titwell. But uh, at the same time, you. we all grew up as, as brothers. So I feel like when, when brothers are feuding, you let brothers sort it out. And um, you know, something of that of that manner, it caused a great division because, you know, Rizak and, and uh, Cam are blood brothers. And then uh, as, as far as Paul, you know, they, they, they hung out together. They played together, they hooped together. So, so it, it was, uh, it was, it, it was a discomfort, you know what I mean, to, to hear uh, of that happening. 
because those are my brothers. You know what I mean? And yeah. even even with uh, Mike Jones and Camille in that situation, uh, I, uh, Mike had a Mike had a Caprice. If you seen the steel tipping, he had a black Caprice on twenty two. I had an Impala the same color. I pulled up and and Cam came out the studio. And he was like, "Dog, dog, I thought you were Mike." And I'm like, "Come on, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Chill. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, but but it was discomfort because Mike, that's my boy too. Yeah. You know. And um, so so. As, as far as me being a mediator and understand my, my, my being, when it come to beef in between the family, I don't two sides, I don't get in it because I'm praying for them to solve it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, it, it, it wasn't a good feeling. But, yeah. but at Rizaka Stubborn and... Um, <laughs> Is it Rizaka know, Stubborn? Yeah, you know, he's trying... Yeah, he, and, and Paul, Paul, you know, he, Paul is Paul. So, so, but Paul is forgiving and Rizaki is too. Yes. But, but Rizaki is more stubborn. Was everyone shooting for the number one spot back? Like, just everyone shooting for that number one spot out of H Town back then, like, because that's back when the deals were coming in. Yeah, Flip I got Flip, Universal. Flip, yeah, I say, I say, uh, they offered me six hundred thousand. I was like, man, y'all giving everybody else a million <laughs> yeah, on my real. meal ticket. For real. And they was like, we need you to dumb it down. We need more candy paint and drink, because you know, uh, I can't say on my grown man style album. I, I had a Kanye West feel before Kanye West came out. Humble. Yeah. But they, they they was like, man, we need more drink candy paint. I was like, man, I'm political, I'm spiritual. Uh, dumb it down, I'm articulate. You know yeah. what I mean? So so I, I okay, I can try. So so that didn't work out because I I I, I accused my my manager of uh, dealing with one of my stores in Virginia. I see. Um, is that around the time? Um, I think Cam and uh, Kanye West actually had a song that oh oh. Uh, Talk to different hoes that you know. No, was that around that time um, when Kanye was coming out and him and uh, I think Cam had went up to Cleveland. We we we, we were in Cleveland. Yeah, you, okay, you, you, you were Ohio. okay. You was up there with him. We dropped the Cleveland Ohio Joe City. Yeah, but, yeah exactly. Was that around that time when they was uh, trying to throw y'all deals? Like, man, here we trying to get y'all. It, it was I, 2005, actually. Uh, shout out to Nancy. You know, um, it, it was 2005, and uh, Sway from MTV he came down and. Um, you know, uh, that was my first time, you know, actually throwing $700 in a strip club because I got the pimp oh, on and we don't throw money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, you know, but but at the same time, you know, uh, it, it was around that time and Nancy was like, who, uh, I think Rizak and Twin would make a good group. You know? Thanks. And um, around this time, I can say this. Go ahead. The major labels were asking about a lot of people and some people that were in position weren't passing the word to. Oh, damn. So I can't say that. Now this is pe- being this honest. Is, this is post uh, Universal gave Flip the twenty two mil. Twenty two mil. This is after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, flip, yeah. flip. Uh, I think Flip was the first to go nation. Yeah. Mike was the first to sell one point six million. Yeah. When platinum. Cam was the first to break the ringtone record. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 Riding dirty. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so, so you know, Thug Boss. He was the first to make him drop that M. I want this and I want a Billy and give my boy Killer something. So so we was making noise and banging gongs. Mm. You know? So 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 as far as far as the North Side era, we took it nationwide and gave them a new lingo to, you know. So I have to ask you then, um, you know, and speaking of shout out Paul Wall, because uh shout out to Paul he Wall. just went viral because he cut his hair. Yeah, and he was they they, they he was at a, a Houston Texas game where he was moving around. And he he just he said this on his story. He's like because he cut his hair and he looks like a he looks like a regular guy, you know, all pepper white. I think he got yeah, the, yeah he got yeah, he got the he got the whole little uh, Clark yeah, I like that look. Man. Yeah, hey, people said they, he said he walked around and niggas people didn't know who he was. That's good. If he didn't, like, what are your thoughts about Paul Wall? Just like as far we're all aging gracefully to where you see him having a shortcut, buzz cut, and just no one knowing who this is. You the braids ain't there. That that's so cool because at the end of the day, he's a father, you know. And, and, yeah. and as we grow older. One of my main things was learning to accept the fact that I got salt and pepper in my chin, you know. And, and when, when they was calling me school in this last prison bid, it felt good because the schools are the ones that get respect. You know what I'm saying? There you go. Now, nah, they, they would say, "Hey, hey, unk, or hey, school." I'm like, "Nigga, you look older than me." <laughs> but I had to think about it. 
I was like, man. That's you know a what I'm respect. Saying? Yeah, that's a respect that's call. A respect thing. So, so I, I think Paul, you know what I'm saying? See, see that move right there, I have him on GQ magazine. <laughs> you know <what> <laughs> For real. Fuck him. It's fair to have him, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> on the slab magazine. But that right there, I take him to different platforms. You got to be innovative in life. You know what I mean? You got to. You got you to know. One, one thing a young brother told me, I was on Metro Bus, Ads 50 50 twin. And the yeah. young brother had on a suit. I said, man, how old are you? He said, I'm 16. I said, where are you headed? He said, I got a job working at the high rise in the office. I said, how you get that job? He said, I changed clothes. He said, my mentor told me, change clothes and you go places. The young dude with a suit. I said, you know what? Thank you. I Come will be now. wearing more suits and more dress suits. There you go. And uh, again, shout out your brother. Again, as if y'all didn't watch the last interview, you, you were a set of three twins. Yeah, I'm a triplet. I'm you a triplet. triplet. My sister Mary, she's an E5 retired, retired sergeant. You know what I'm saying? Pilot fly. Literally. Uh, my brother, my brother Broderick, he's been on Ferguson Unit. He holds Talene for the Muslims. Yes. He writes for the uh, Ferguson Unit newspaper. Um, he, he, he's, uh, he has a, a degree in uh, web design. And, and um, he actually is a mentor to the young brothers that come into the system and don't know how to do time. So uh, when he went, he's been in there 23 years. He came up for parole this year. We had letters from uh, Navy SEAL captains. We had letters from uh, my, my boy that, that's a professor at, at uh, Rutgers, a doctor's, you know, yeah. doctor's degree. We had, we had letters from different people, but um, he got set off for two more years. And he said, I want you to do a song called Mandela Years. Mm. When Nelson Mandela done 25 years, he stopped complaining and said, it is what it is. I am what it, you know, I'm here for a cause. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he, he got out and he ended up being president. It's like the Joseph story. Exactly. Uh, but, but when he went, when my brother went back to his unit, he saw a young Hispanic brother that was crying and he witnessed to him. He saw another brother that was cutting on his wrist and he witnessed to him. Wow. And um, my brother had the strength to say, well, maybe God set me off to be here for these youngsters. Man, uh, uh, me and my brother, we the same people, but yet he my damn sequel. Exactly. Uh, we, we had that's Troy face off. I'm telling you, we had a shout out OG Percy. Um, shout he, out to OG Percy. Yeah, he actually served time Talking with time. him. Like he yeah, actually yeah, yeah. said, bro, they actually performed together mm-hmm. while they were serving on Ferguson Unit. Where he like, nah, I learned a lot from him. As a matter of fact, he yeah. got me on my music. Yeah. And when he got out, we started doing battle rap with OG Percy to where I'm like to see him go through that with yes, your brother sir. and then get out and put the music, stay with it. I'm like, that's just a blessing right there. And, and I heard him mention that my brother, uh, you know, put in his ear, man, you should, you, maybe you should do this. And uh, OG Percy, I never met him in person, but me knowing from the streets, OG Percy is a leader. He's a general. Yeah. That place right there is one of the hardest prison units in Texas. Right. And Texas has a bigger has two third of a prison population in the world. Facts, you know, and and so so for him to be a leader in in a in a, in a gladiator unit like that, it speaks volumes. And for my brother to be a unit, they on one side, and he said, "Hey man, I went to holler that twin," and he said, "Hey man, I know how you do it down now, but down here, let's read some books and let's exercise." That's my brother. Man, he Bruce Lee, I'm Jet Li. Man. You know, I haven't I haven't had lived the perfect walk. I went through my drug addiction and things of this nature, but I've always been a leader. And my brother the same way inside there. He's just more disciplined. You know, there you go. He he, he, t- he said uh, this time he said, "Ask a Muslim brother what does knowledge of self mean." There you go. Twenty three years, like you said, Nelson Mandela. Years. Mandela years. Uh, yeah. Man, I, we we can only wait. You know, uh, BG just came home. Shout Hopefully, see murder get home, but we Shout definitely want a little twin to, uh, to 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 come home. Now. I have to ask you, um, you stated you just did a bit. Yeah. Uh, well, um, hmm? how, what, can you can you touch on that as far as what even got you sent up? Definitely, man. Uh, I'm, I'm transparent, and I, and I love being transparent because uh, my testimony is my walk of life. But, uh, man, I was standing on Titwell in 290 in the apartments, and, and I came from picking my, my uh, significant other up from work, and my, my house had got broken, too. But with, with my keen sense of radar detection, I see a youngster that's still outside around this time. It's like he's pacing to see if who know done it. So I called up a pistol, and I cocked it. And I'm walking through. I parked my truck, put on my cap, put on my boots, and I parked my truck over here and came. And somebody saw the flash of the chrome and called the police, but I didn't know it. And I'm finna shooting their house, and the police said throw the weapon. So I threw it backwards and dove forward. I didn't want to do like this and, yeah. and become and a, have a situation. Yeah. So I threw it backwards and drove forward. But but when I talked to the officer, it was a white officer, and they say crooked cops, you know, all white, this and that. I beg to differ. I said, sir. I'm in a hostile environment, and, and these teenagers, they don't care. I said, sir, this pistol ain't illegal. 
I'm a convicted felon, yes, but this Code 45 is not illegal. And um, he said, you know what? I understand. He said, you'll be out tomorrow on a PR bond. That's what they tell you. You know, and um, so so I ended up getting out. I didn't get a I didn't get a PR bond, but I bonded myself out. But yeah. while out, getting on the th- drugs, thug the drugging, I caught an assault case. So I went back for assault and then got on probation. But when I signed probation, I, I don't like stipulations. You know what I'm saying? I'm all about to know. Yeah. So, so, so I tell my parole officer, bitch, you thank you, God. God forgive me for cursing at the lady. Yeah, no, I know. We, we know you come. A lot of niggas know exactly where you're coming from. She said, Mr. Brown, you need to come see me. I said, bitch, you thank you, God. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I ain't lying. You know what I'm saying? Because I already planned on doing it. So I ended up doing a year. And um, Harris County Jail is one of the hardest county, counties to uh, you know, do time in right now. I had five squabbles in county jail. God five damn. squabbles. And when I went to prison, they were more organized because people were trying to make parole. Yeah. But but, but Harris man, County, when man, you were in the jail system, it's... Man, youngster had a, a commissary bag on the kiosk machine and would stand up and say, put some money in this bag Put well, on store day. Put some in this bag because I'm going to roll y'all up out of here. I said, bro, it's twin. Come on, big bro. I'm not talking to you. I said, man, well, you need to tell who you're talking to. <laughs> Facts. Yes, sir. You got to speak on it. Um, with that being said, uh, again, you know, we was talking off camera, but uh, you know, you came in there with a notoriety. I mean, people at this time know you. Yeah. I mean, you're, you know, you're fifty fifty twenty. You coming definitely, in? Definitely, definitely. Uh, again, we're getting to legendary status now. You're a national treasure. To where, all right, they see you, they know you by face now. Yeah. Uh, we because we in the social media era now. Mm-hmm. Um, how are they treating you? Are you in GP? Are you in general general pop? Are you? Are do they have to put you up because of who you are? I'm, no, no. Uh, well, I'm, I'm in general population, preferably because uh, one thing I like to recreate. I'm a workout because I, you know, what I'm saying it's like I'm detoxing that, and I and and I'm a pain freak with you. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, once I get out the way, now I'm reflecting on I could have controlled my my temper. You know, yeah. because I'm older. And um, one thing about it is these youngsters. The the uh you know it, it's like it's like they know how to get money fast. You you had youngsters in there that, that are doing breaking and entries with no pistol because they know it's just robbery. So they're going to get state jail time for this situation that that they done made eighty thousand dollars on and tried it again. Yeah. So so when they coming out with this type of money they done made, they arrogant, they egotistical, and they they don't care about your age. Yeah. You know and, and so so I've seen some some guys my age forty three get disrespected. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I got a 22 year old, so so I'm looking at you respect. But if you don't give it back, I'm gonna whoop your ass because your mama didn't. You know <laughs> Not what I'm saying? Because your mama didn't. Yeah, no, for real. But at the same time, you know, with, with, with my name being 50 50 twin, it was embarrassment. It wasn't nothing embarrassment because I was telling them, man, I'm out there tripping. I'm out there on these drugs, and I'm telling them, bro. And then I had my my big homies who were saying, twin, man, you throwing rocks at the penitentiary. If if you don't want your talent, bro, give it to me. So, so it was a double entendre, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, nah, for real. Give it and, to me. And then, I, and then when it comes to guards saying, twin, I know who you are, it became embarrassing. You know what I'm saying? Did they ever want you to rap? Yes, and I hated that shit. Yeah. I, 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 would, I would rap for, as a form of therapy. We'd be on the table, freestyle. It's like me engaging with the youngsters to make their time go by. You got you to gotta yeah. reach, reach a teenager where they at. You got to reach a young person where they at. You know what I'm saying? Thanks. And so, 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 uh, that that was my way of vibing with them. And I'd be like, "Come on, you know, prayer circle, lay y'all black ass down." Don't be. But, <laughs> but, but they, they 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 taking people bags and stuff. Yeah. First out the prayer circle, I said, "Bro, we just got through praying. We just finished praying." <laughs> he snatched. You already bag. own it, yeah. You already own it. Yeah, he, I'm talking about dude sleep. He snatched his bag. Fresh out the prayer circle. Damn. I say, "Bro, who you was praying to?" <laughs> Who you praying to? I was praying to the Rob gods. Yeah, the Rob gods. <laughs> how, how, how did you spend your time? Like, how did you get through it personally? Like, when you look back on it, like, just to, to the point you got out, how did you get through it? Okay, well, well my first time on, on, on a unit where, where we, we're going to two-man sales, yeah. I had a, 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 a AB as a celly, a, a, a Aryan Brotherhood. And you will learn how to adjust to somebody of a totally different walk of life. This Aryan brother did like, didn't like like nigger boys. But me and him found common ground. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and um, you know, Miss King understand, tell you what I'm talking about when you walk by the cell. Shout out Miss King. Two, two total people who don't get along. But because they trying to go, go home or they tired of fighting, they find something come. It yeah. might be the chessboard. It might be drawing. It might be broke. 
you know what I'm saying? Can you ink me up? Yeah, put them they, together. Yeah, put them together. They're going to figure it out. Wrong. Damn. And, 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 this, and this white brother, you know, I, 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 find, my, I find myself in a spaz out on him some yeah. days. But I said, Lord, if, if I beat him up, now we still got to stay in here, or they're going to put me in this G5 and I'm caged up like an animal. So, Lord, how can I find a way to get along with this brother? Because we both men. And you know what I thought about? He got a mama like I got a mama. He may have a daughter like I have a daughter. When you disrespect another man, you're not only disrespecting him, you're disrespecting his family, too. Yeah. He, right. he might get a visit. Yeah. And, and, and I don't, you know, let's they, they say. Was he older than you or younger than you? He done more time than me. See, uh, see time is wisdom now. That's you, you can be famous. You can be yoked up. You can be swole. It's a nerd that know how to do his time better than you. And, and you might be, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But but he, he know he know how to he know how to do his time because he done done it before. So so in there, it ain't. I, I like like one like I say, you know what I'm saying? Like my brother wrote me one day. He said, "Man, yeah. it's the guy reading the comic book. Look at that comic book that will slice your throat." I'm telling you. Don't judge a book by its covers. What, what, what that taught me. Man, in the cell with an Aryan Brotherhood on. Um, that's wild. Hispanic too. A Hispanic brother too. You know, uh, it, it's politics. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mexicans and blacks, they don't eat at the same table. Whites are at the same table. But you got people that will come together on common grounds. You know what I mean? Did they ever try to test you? Like, like hey, what you what you, what you you claiming? Like, what, what you own? What? Yeah, uh, uh, a young blood brother, you know, uh, because, you know, they, they, uh, they know I'm highly, you know, Hollywood mob, Hollywood click. Yeah, that, that's back in the gap. That's something that that you know what I'm saying. But yeah, you started. you started. Yeah, that's something I you started. started. Yeah, I started. You know, yeah. South Walker mentioned it in one of his interviews about when it come to clicks. Hollywood click is one of the biggest. I started, and yeah, we in the files. I admit that. But but at the same time, we went to church in groups of cars and things of that nature too. But but as far as when that young brother walked up and say, "Twin, what you claim?" I said, "Man, I'm Hollywood mob. I'm neutral. You know what I'm saying? I'm God first. Mm -hmm. You got you got bloods, you got crips, you got young brothers who don't want to do it no more, and and, and they, uh, you know what I'm saying they might say I'm neutral, man. I'm not active. You know what I'm saying? Cause but but in now, it's like, you know, it, it, it's just so much negative energy that it's hard to dodge that when you're looking for you know, they say looking for love and all the wrong places. You look right. you looking to be a part of something. You got to be a stand up guy to say, hey man, I'm chilling. That's real. I have to ask you, uh, twin, um. You know, you you spoke on your detox, um, yes, sir. and uh, you know, again, your testimony is, is your walk. I have to ask, uh, you know, during that time, as far as you know, struggling with, if, it, if you know, whether addiction or just even liking it, what was your drug of choice at that time? Okay, uh, in in the in the in the seventies, their drug of choice was crack and heroin. Uh, in the nineties, springing off from the eighties, my my big homies, I drug I drug a choice was usually PCP. We, we cocaine, it wasn't a thing. PCP wasn't a thing either. I transformed into my brother. When when my brother got time, I didn't know he was smoking PCP. That's why he had the galls to go rob and do this and that. But but uh, one day I w I would score every every type of drug when I would go score and and I would score vanilla abstract of PCP. And um, one day uh, I was going to score and. Uh, it was kind of like when DMX said, an uh, uh, older guy introduced him to, to a spliff. Yeah, but we said we were 14, yeah. My, my boy was like, hey, tap it one time, man. It ain't going to do much to you. And, and when I tapped it, it gave me this courage that I never felt before. And I, I wrote a rap, like fast like Eminem. Oh, no more swangers in Vogue, riding 20 inch or more. No, sir, hell no, no, so no. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, damn, how I do that? So, so every now and then, I would tap that kryptonite to, That's you know it. what I mean? Yeah. And, and when, when, we, when we would go places, when I would be detoxing, and, and it's called a hijacked brain. A hijacked brain is when you get chemical substance in your body and yeah. you don't have it, your, your uh, pleasure sensors are asking for it and they make you lash out. It could be liquor, it could be anything. So I would be on the road sometimes and, and uh, I would flip out and, and uh, come in and be like, dog, you bipolar. Mm -hmm. But he don't know that I'm low key doing this. So so if anybody have addiction, tell somebody, man, go get some help. So I'm curious, uh, when it comes to like even like your greatest hits, right? When we listen to them flows, how many what percentage of them flows would you say you was probably wrote that shit while you was, you know, tooted on it? Yeah. I uh I recall being at being at uh the studio, community studio, I was like, hoes, dials, quarters, fire, <laughs> head, mouth, brain, mind, yeah. slabs, wit. <laughs> Twangs, bangs, screams, leather, wood, grain, yeah. die, show up, 
stroll, ball. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then, no citizens, yeah. But what Cam didn't know is I went downstairs and I went and bought 300 tabs. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm hustling. I went, I said, hey, Cam, hold up real quick. Went downstairs, my connect pulled up, gave me 300 tabs. I was like, let me try a triple stack Ferrari. And then I say, hey, Cam, I could write a rap with no sentences. Color changes so cold with this pen and shit. We can write a rap with no sentences. Yeah. Tell me you know what I'm saying? So, 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 I'm going to tell y'all something about the rap game. Yeah. Just like Nicki Minaj just said when she talked to Future. He said, you know what? I don't do shirts. I don't do perks. I don't do none of that. She was like, well, your fans think you do. Yeah. You never know what mind frame a person is in. Well, you, you know, you may agree with what they're saying. You may feel what they're saying. But, but some open that, that, that gate. No. To, to, for them to think like that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And you yeah. never know what it is. Man. For a person to, to be sober and, and just, just think a brilliant thought, I give them props. Yeah, I give them props because I ain't gonna lie, you, you came with some brilliant shit. Uh, God damn it. You, yeah, came, yeah, 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 you, yeah. Came, you came with some brilliant shit on. I, I, was, I was sober some of the time, but, uh, but I was on my level a lot of the time. God forgive me. So I have to ask you then, um, uh, let's, let, let's, let's, let's talk about it because um, you know, you know, it's a situation where we see, um, uh, and again, uh, the the legendary uh, Big Pokey uh, mm-hmm. out on stage, my, my and um, we see him, you know, fall back and you know take his last breath. And it's something that uh, you know, of course, you know, Big Mo and you know just everyone that followed before that. Yeah. Uh, but you know, during the social media area to see to see Big Pokey do to see what happened with that for wow. you, uh, what. What went through your head to see that, you know, again, we're in the social media era, yeah. to see Big Pokey, for that to happen right there for the H-Town Legend? Man, one day, uh, me and Lil C, we was recording a song called Smoked Out Beaten, and it was uh, Big Pokey, C-Note, and ESG on the, on the floor, and he was, we recorded that run, OG Run C House, and um, Podina, he sipped drink, he, and uh, he said, fifth, uh, we was pouring up like a six. I, he said, uh, I said, what you drink? What kind of soda you drink? He said, uh, A&W cream soda. But uh, he was on his level, mm-hmm. on the dip. And uh, my boy, Lil C, was like, twin, come holler at me in the hallway of the house. And uh, he was like, man, I don't think he ready. I said, man, that's Podina, bro. That's a legend. I said, give him a little time. And Podina panned down and wrecked the flow. You know what I'm saying? So, so it's like, even though, like I say, sometimes that 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 give you that that level of you know what I'm saying, open your mind to different thoughts. You got writer's block, but but when that happened, it it didn't it, it affected me because I know PCP was my drug choice. I'm not saying that's what he was on, but cardiac arrest don't discriminate. It don't he, discriminate. He, he left a family behind, and the fact that God chose to call him home, doing what he loved. Oh man. God would God would use another person to open your eyes, and you know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. he on stage, man. Man, and with his wife in the crowd, you know what I'm saying? So, so, well, well, it's, it's, it, it opened my eyes, and I went to rehab. And when I was in rehab, I was reading a book called "The Utmost for My Your Highest" by uh, Oswald Chambers. And while reading this book, the Holy Spirit told me it's more to life than being sober. Wow! Even when you put the drug down, it's things that you're gonna have to accomplish. Either you're gonna make up for it, or it's things that you are already supposed to be doing as an adult. So, yeah. so you have sober people that got addictions. It might be shopping. It might be egotistical. It might be narcissistic. It's more life to being sober and health is wealth. So, so you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Thug Ball because he going to hit the track every day. Yeah. Shout out to people who, who understand this, that health is wealth. I still eat spreads. I still eat Zuzus and Wham Wham. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not finna be a vegan because I tried it. Yeah. But at the same time, if you reach a, if you reach... If you reach a, a certain, if you reach a, a certain, a certain pinnacle on, on your finances, yeah. you're gonna want to be there to, to enjoy your finances and manage them because you don't want to just leave them with anybody. So you're gonna find yourself in the gym, or you're gonna find yourself walking, or you're gonna find yourself saying, "How can how, how, you know what I mean?" Because I want just, I want to enjoy this. I work hard for this. I'm gonna say health as well. You health know? as well. So so so, uh, Poyo definitely changed my life. And shout out to Po Dino, man. man. Much love, Yellowstone the- Boulevard, Chris Ward. Much love. Let's go to legend. Um, so I have to say, I, I have to ask you. I have to segue. Then, um, you know, uh, Bum B open trip burger. Yeah. Speaking on health, them burgers look sloppy like a mother. Oh, they look, ooh, they look greasy to the mother. 
<laughs> have you had have you had a trio burger yet? I'm a trio burger. I'm a ace time trio burger eating that nigga. <laughs> Polo hearts on my body. Fuck here, figure. <laughs> Coca Cola classic. I ain't never been to Pepsi. T shirt wearing. I ain't gotta have a necklace. I'm a four five tipper. I don't never go backwards. Teach you how to stunt. I ain't never been an actor. I'm a if this don't work. I'm a pick me up a scale. <laughs> Come on, man. Well, so I tell, but uh, it's, so that that's more of a blessing to see Bun B open his chill burgers. I mean, you know, of course he's been yeah, doing yeah, it, but yeah. to open up his restaurant and the amount of love that Bun B is getting for H Town, the sure. amount of celebrities that make sure they stop through, no matter who's there, for sure. For sure. to give H Town that look. You know what I'm saying? How is that feeling, just being a hometown native, to see what the Unk Bun B is doing with his chill burger line? I feel so honored, man. Um, in the book by Malcolm Gladwell called Outliers, he said it's something, it's something called middle ground. Right, ne- right now, Dallas, Texas, real life street stars, this is my middle ground. Talk about we, it. We sharing a moment that will catapult me into life because this played a part of my life. So so when you set up a, when, like, like, like your platform, it, it's a platform that people come to and they have a voice, man. Come you know on. what I'm saying? Your garden of eating is your brain. And you got four rivers that flows from in your ears and your eyes. Whatever you see and you put in your ears, like you be on Facebook all night, that's going to come out your ocean. You blessing people with a platform for something to come out their ocean. Trio Burgers, you know black people. And God forgive me. God forgive me. But, but, but people come together when it comes to food. Come on now. I'm not at all. You know, I don't do, I don't do ethnicity, races. I believe one human race. People but come together. People come together for food. <laughs> yeah. And some food get a pass. <laughs> That's ribs, that's pork top, that's hamburgers, and things of this nature. So Back. we've seen Two Shot, we've seen Drake, we've seen E4O, we've seen many people come to the age. It's, it's, it's a wonderful feeling, man. Man, it's beautiful, it's man, uh, feeling, man, to see a, a resurgence that outside of music. Yes. Because that's all we want. That's all we want for even some of our Dallas legends is like, outside of music, what can come after the music? Right. And right, right. H-Town is really kind of setting the path from what Thug is doing, mm-hmm. Bun is doing. It's just kind of really showing that the music is supposed to catapult you to that that dream to feed your kids forever. Definitely. Forever. Freestyle off the dome. That is my second home. I could pop trunk in Antoine and close my trunk in Rome. It's that 50-50 twin. I think I created drip. You can ask King Journey how much ice I put high on my lip. We didn't have social media, so I could take pictures of Shout out to OG Kiki. He taught me how to recline my bumper kick. And with that being said, uh, you know, I was I was on IG going live and I was speaking on generational wealth. Uh, one of the most selfish things that we could do is leave our kids with with, with no with no safe haven. And um, well, you know, me growing up as a teenager, my uncles and my my, my uncle Warren, my uncle Ken, they own businesses. So so we we had safe havens. We were just too bad to appreciate it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But but uh, when Uncle Ken and Uncle Warren is gone, I don't know who. You know, if it, whoever's looking, I don't know who your uncle Ken or your uncle Warren is, but you you need to be that. You know what I'm saying? Because the, the, the nieces and nephews, it's the, the hard times do exist, yeah. and they may not want to step out on their patio for the rest of their life and say, "I got to throw it off ass neighbor because I'm staying the bricks," yeah, or I stay in the hood. When I say bricks, I mean hood, apartments, anywhere. You know what I'm saying? When are we yeah. gonna teach them about secure bank accounts? When are we gonna teach them about you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, 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 pass the yeah, game yeah. forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, pay it forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I do want to ask you about you know J Dog did touch on something. We're right on. Uh, road. Where we talking about Houston politics, man, and we see the situation brother, between. Yeah, shout out fucking Jay, man. Shout out Big J, man. Uh, he touched on uh, the zero and Trey situation, man. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is technically, if it wasn't on camera, it's probably something that would have been deaded. You know, off camera, we would have heard about it and then moved on. But it was on camera. For sure. And it did get the nationwide news that it got. Um, uh, For you being who you are, H-Town Native again, a Houstonian, a Houstonian, I apologize. What did you take from what you saw as it unfolded? Um, With the the video? Yeah, with the video of what you seen with Zero and Trey. Okay. um, You know, when you ice skate at the Galleria Mall, 
Yeah. yeah. If you're a beginner, you want to watch how you slide out on ice. Facts. You know what I'm saying? And as you get going, then you can do your tricks. You can do your three sixes. You can do your Nancy Kerrigan thing. So, so when it comes to situation as far as speaking on my brothers in the city, I'm going to ice skate. Definitely. And I'm going to speak on it because I've known Trey since seventh grade. I've encountered zero, you know what I'm saying, yeah. on one occasion. And uh, I want to be straightforward. When I first met Zero, you know, we were at Southwest Distribution, and I walked up to him, and he had his arms folded. But this king of the ghetto, he did me like this. I said, bro, I ain't bopping you, bro. I ain't a dick rider, bro. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? And went and got back in the truck. But but my boy Cat, you know what I'm saying, who was my manager at the time, he called me and said, twin. Zero said he didn't know who you were. I said, I could have been a fan. Um, As far as that situation with him and Trey, that was family business, you know what I'm saying? And um, as, as far as as far as far as what Hall said, Hall, you know what I'm saying, said it for a reason. JD Hall, he said it for a reason. But as far as far as me balling up in the fetal position, man, uh, you know what I'm saying? I grew up on the block where well, I'm from the squabble. I'm from the squabble, man. And, and I don't know if that's what my boy was talking about when he said. Whoop the whoop, whoop the whoop, you deserve to get started. We grew up on the block, and, I, and and Zero must respect, man. Must respect, man. King of the ghetto, must respect. Okay. Wrote the Van Dross, man. Must respect for what you do for the for the Houston culture, man. Must respect. But on our block, we gonna fade everything, you know what I'm saying? And done it before. I got jumped by four, I, I really jumped by 14 boys on me, pain fall often, oh lordy, have mercy. I said it in my rap, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And just joking, when I'm with Kiati and I'm saying, they say, introducing little twin from the north side and they start booing me, I threw the mic down and said, fuck all y'all, Tupac, and start squabbling. <laughs> Bully marks go with that. Mm. That's north side, south side plex. But what I'm saying is, if you, you know what I'm saying, we, 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 that's, just, that's just how we, we gonna squabble. You're not finna make me curl up. But he was saying that going to a platform is, 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 is a form of, of, of snitching, it. yeah, snitching, but going I to the news. To, yeah, yeah, going to the news. And, and um, so so with this being said, I put up a post this week. You can ask Charlie Mo. I said, man, I had a gun put on me twice. Oh. In the same day by the same person. Oh. And I know them. My family said, I think you should go call the police. I said, well, me going to call the police or going to the station, if this man get arrested, me, my name being on the paper would be even worse. Mm-hmm. Because if I go to jail and he done spread the name, oh, man, Twain was on my papers, that ain't a good look for me. Reputa- Reputation-wise? Reputation-wise, it's not a good look. Security-wise, me, me go, okay, I'm finna get the, 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 the con to that. If I go on the station and say, hey, man, this guy just put a gun at me, and he said, yeah, I got a switch on that bitch, too. Okay, I'm telling y'all, so if I erase his face, self-defense. That's the con part of it. Damn. So, so I don't know why. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe that brother was saying, "Hey, if I have to defend myself, this is why I did this." I'm not. I don't know why. But, but as far as the con part of it, people, if 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 so, if, if you feel like you need to go put some security on yourself, man, put some security on yourself. Everybody don't though. Some people say we gonna handle in the streets because these laws don't give a fuck about us anyway. Yeah, that's always the mentality. We're going to handle yeah, it in yeah. the streets because they don't. Yeah. So I have to ask you then, if you can, for those that don't know, um, for Trey and Zero, are they are they related? If they're not, how, like you said, you went to school. Yeah, back in junior high. Me, Trey, and Slim was in school in the seventh grade. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, So it's uh, damn near like family, though. Yeah. Damn near. We, we, we were on the north side. And uh, so, so uh, I think Trey would probably go to the south. You know what I'm saying? Every now and then, but but as, as far as blood relatives, as far as my knowledge, they they not they not blood relatives. Zero and Trey are not blood relatives. Shout out to Dougie D. Shout out to Gorilla Mob. Shout out to Trey the Truth. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but I don't, I don't think they're blood relatives, as far as my knowledge, because I, I you know boss, little boss and Trey are blood cousins. Man, come on now. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, we all. Yeah. You know, goddamn it. You know, from the outside looking in, like all y'all family. Yeah. You know, and, and the way y'all moving, like all y'all family. Me and Slim, we 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 were in wood. When Slim say in wood, we we were in wood. Go back. Uh, we, uh, we would see each other. I see him on the beach cruiser fold out, or he might be in his boss hall with the bullhorns. You know what I'm saying? I might be in my Seville. I might be in my nightlight. 
and we all start up, but we ain't bopping each other. We ain't, we, you know what I'm saying? We, we all we all got our own individuality. You know what I mean? That's facts. Um, I have to ask you, I think late last year, uh, Screw was supposed to drop a documentary. Did that documentary ever come out? It was that documentary came out, and and, and the uh, perception that they gave with the North Side is that we're thieves. Yeah, and, that's the perception we. And, and I want to say this. Talk about North Side, North Side. We just too much. Yes, sir. I'm just. But, uh, you know. So what? wait, wait. So the perception that was put out there, because again, you were talking. Screw is what the world looks at when it comes to Houston. They hear the word screw and DJ Screw. Yes, sir. When it comes to Michael Watts, he's. After that, uh, even though he had that real push to put the you know that screw in the world's face, but mm-hmm. DJ Screw, for what the world looks at, is like man. The, if they say, "Hey, the North Side stole the whole shit," yeah. What do you? What I, I mean, bro? What do you say? Because you from the section, and the documentary is supposed to paint a picture. Man, you know what? When, when uh, my my boy Lamont Green, Monty, off off the, off that uh Club Creek. Yeah. We would be at church and, and he'd be like, hey, twin, I got that new screw tape. You know what I'm saying? This 9493. So when I'm listening to screw tapes, I'm like, man, these boys got TVs in their cars, whoop de woo, whoop de woo. And this is Don Key, this big pokey. Yeah. This little Dex. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Looking in my closet, Versace, Ralph Lauren, neither one of them boring. It's time to jump foreign. Yeah. This is the reason why I still rock polo. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm a man, I'm a cold color classic. So, 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 boom. A lot of the stuff that 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 uh we done, you know, what I'm saying coming up in our era was based off of the stuff we heard on screw tapes. But 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 when when it innovated to the north side, we we were more articulated. North side has a has a totally different. I, I say demeanor about ourselves. South side they more fly, they laid back. What's up, baby? Yeah. North side we more edgy. <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. We edgy man. Yeah. We you know what I'm saying. I done been at the club and, and, and you know what I'm saying, and I was like, nigga, what are you talking about? And he say, boom, oh, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but with the same thing on the south side, like Chinese people, you know what I'm saying? They more fly with it. It, it. It's like, I guess it's like being in the Bronx or being in Brooklyn or being in Queens or being in Harlem. It, it, you know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's different personas. But but I can say innovation-wise, we we took they gumbo and we said, I think I could add Tony Sassaris. Come on now, and, and you know what I'm saying. And so, so we 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 articulated different, and um, we 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 learned distributors in in a in a grand scale, and we network with nationwide. Uh, you know, but but I can't say Big Pokey, Fat Pat, Kiki. These boys was doing five hundred thousand independent, no independent. labels, without question. Pop Trunk, you know what uh, I'm saying. Shit, Southside, out. you know what I'm saying. Yeah, uh, uh, Dope Game Two Thousand, Hardest Pit in the Little, Ghetto Dreams. Yeah. These was my biggest smiles, you know what I'm saying? The, the, you know what I'm saying? Kiki, when he came to do a flow with me, I said, OG, I used to go to school and sell your raps and mix them in with my flows. Now, facts. Facts. You know what facts. I'm saying? So, so, yes, sir. So, I got to put... A the... lot of stuff came from... from uh, A lot of it came from school you. So... And the key, and SUC. Twin, yeah, shout out to SUC. God damn it. Um, I got to put you on the spot, though. Who was your personal favorite... Uh. Uh, chopped and screw, uh, 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 extravagant, you know, whatever you want to call it, from whether DJ Screw, Michael Watts, OG Ron C. Okay. OG Ron C. Man, I had to make one of the hardest choices in my <laughs> life, man. And, and this is going to this gonna be the uh, first time hearing this. Come on now. I, I never met Screws in person, but I always wanted to. Uh, Implement and duplicate what I heard uh, Kiki and Big po- Poyo doing. You know what yeah. I'm saying on the tapes. When okay with with uh with, with Michael Watts hit me and he and this was 2006. He said I want you to come over to Switch House. Ron C hit me and said Twin, I'm finna get a house right on right by Guff Bank. We <laughs> right cool, on five bedroom. You know what I'm saying? We all getting money. I got distributors. He got distributors and uh. He said, man, we finna drop so many albums. And uh, man, I went over here to, well, you know what I'm saying? Over here by Rum because I'm, I'm, I, Rock for Rock is my life. We're independent, but we're doing our thing. But uh, and shout out Rock for Rock. I feel that if I went over to Watts, it would have been, a, it been a, a bigger platform as far as 
You exposure. Know, exposure. Yeah. Because you got Kiki, you got Pow Wow, you got Red, you got Lil Young. Shout out to Lil Young. Yeah. You know what I mean? Shout out to my boy Red. You know what I'm saying? You got uh Surreal over here. Shout out to Surreal. It would have been it would have been big exposure. So when it comes to doing business, sometimes you gotta put aside, you know what I mean, yeah. your rational thinking and say, what well, what would be a bigger business deal? Yeah. Because everybody can't go, we know that. But when you come back to get them, you can take them with you. Man. I would say they call me Big Watts. Homestead Home is where you find me. No, try to stop me. But, to, but, but they can't hide me. me. Yeah. So I, I would say Big Watts, is, I call him Master Splinter. He nah. taught me so much, man. He taught me so much. And um, when, when he said, I want you on this big ball and shot calling, it changed my life. When he said, I want you on this Kappa flow, it changed. Because he have a keen sense of music. He has a keen sense. And to make it on the Switch House taste back then, you didn't know you were gonna be on them until they came out. Until they came out, yeah. You would rap, and you didn't know what was gonna hit. So, so when I, every time I make the cut, I say, "Watch, see that in me." I'm gonna keep going. Shout and out Watts, because you know Watts right now he's doing some business shit uh, outside of music that he's shout really. Out to OG Run, C2, yeah. That's and shout out OG Ron. Yeah. I, I, he needs to come sit on this goddamn Great couch. Just shout out OG Ron C. Uh, a definite, a definite pioneer. Yeah, a definite pioneer. Yeah, I, OG, I, Ron, I, I, OG Ron C is because again, I'm a fuck action. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm I made a whole little CD called Bad Breakers. Uh, that uh, 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 that yeah, was yeah, yeah. that was that was competing against that was competing against Crush Groove. That I was like that I was like, bro, I was following OG Ron C steps because I'm like yeah. in Dallas trying to make Bad Breakers, yeah. trying to fuck with fuck action. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. shout out to OG. I need him on this couch. I just gotta talk to the nigga. OG Ron C. Hey man, come to the couch, man. We hey, we need to talk about this. Come on. And, and, and I can't say OG Ron C taught me a lot of business too. And uh, you know what I'm saying? Michael Watts, he, he just showed me so many atmosphere. Ray face. But I want to say shout out to George Lopez. Yeah, shout out Jake. Uh, I, I gotta big up the big uh, homie. T Town Music. Trendy, man. I um, gotta I gotta big up the big homie, man. What, what, was hey, D Master P coming through the D. Yeah, well, was DSR like a freestyle kings and DSR? Were they niggas, was were y'all worried about them niggas when they was coming up? You know, they're my brothers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Chuck, my brother. Tom, Tom, my brother. Mr. Ronnie, but were you worried brother. about what they was like? Ooh, them niggas applying pressure no, out no, of these. No, uh, 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 well, really, really, um, me, me and Tuck, we used to vibe because because uh, Tuck, Tuck, a gangster and a gentleman, and he's Scott Fly. So, yeah. so that, that was my lane too. So, so me and Tuck, you know, what I mean, I, I'll be in Corpus Christi, he'd be like, Twin, you want this? It'd be a quarter pound of weed. I was like, I'm not finna around with that shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? But but I don't smoke weed, but but uh me and Tuck, that's that's my bro. And um, uh, you know, uh Tuck, Tom Tom, Ronnie. I can Shout out Ronnie. They, they yeah. tip me down when, when, uh, with, with, with the flow with the jerseys. The flow with the jerseys. You know what I'm saying? Now it, I remember you had the what it was, was the track called? Uh I think the track called You Need It with uh you had you BG. Need it, you need it with me and BG. BG and yeah, yeah. uh it's Tuck like fucking with Jeepers. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to see it all come full circle for what BG's doing. Yeah. Uh, welcome home, BG. Welcome home, BG. Uh, goddamn. Uh, you know, and Tuck. You know, again, I just ran into him the other day, and you know, for everybody oh. still here pushing, South it's Dallas. a blessing. Um, now I have to ask you because there's some, you know, as we're as we're giving love and flowers to these Shout niggas. Shout out to Live Ola too. Live yeah. Ola. I want you to name some niggas because I remember the flow, uh, you know, where my brother C's give him a massage and mine do too. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then the, and we start, we start name. Give me Brandon Spanker, she approve of the diesel piece chain. chain. 50 pros off the chain in my range over. When we jump in this my, game, it's over. Uh, Watch when I get a meal. Come on. And buy 10 set of wheels. Yeah. And buy 10 set of swingers. Uh -huh. So my gut ain't block a stunt. Yes, man, man, and there was a lot of names that got mentioned, man. My brother Lil, I mean, yeah. like, bro, when it comes to shouting out niggas, because again, it can go all day. How many niggas really like push the movement forward of of H Town? Because it seemed like yeah. there's so many unnamed heroes that whether rapped or didn't rap yeah. that really paid this movement. Can you shout out some niggas that you know they that may be watching that H Town knows that the world just may not know that was really moving and shaking behind the scenes and whatnot? It is uh let's say when you hear Kiki say Corey Blunt, the slab king. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or, or you know what I'm saying on the north side we got Buck, the slab king. You know what I'm saying? Or you may you may have heard J Dog and them say, rest in peace to Google. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He was a knockout artist, like Jackie Chang, Bruce Lee status. You may hear him say OG Big Howard, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Who, 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 he, he, it's like it's like when he got out of when he got out of prison, and um he saw the potential in us. He taught us how to survive in the streets. So it's so many people that 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 that, they, that when they say it take a village, it's Man. so many people that that play a part. You know what I'm saying? That's and, right. uh, and and uh, a lot of us artists, it's like every rap artist got some drug dealer traits. 
and every drug dealer probably used the, the rap music as 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 they uh, soundtrack. You know what I mean? So, That's so right. When, when, when rappers be like, uh, when 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 some rappers be like, I ain't really no rapper. Well, get your bitch ass on. <laughs> so I ain't really, I ain't yeah, no man. rapper. So this nigga, well, this nigga's really yeah, trying to rap in this motherfucker. Yeah, these niggas on that rap shit. Well, get your bitch ass on, man. This is my therapy. <laughs> yeah. If I want doing this, I probably pop your fool ass. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But but, but, but uh, it, it's so many hustles. You know what I'm saying? You know, like Dapper Dan. The fashion, oh, yeah. you know yeah. what I'm saying? When it come to fashion, I think rap, uh, you know, break dancing, it was things that came with the culture. Facts. So, so, so it, it's and, and uh, hustlers, they, they when when most rappers they saw them hustlers on the way to the studio and say, man, I want one of them. Man. Well, I'm finna rap my way out the hood. Come on. Or the man. hustlers saying, you know what? I want out the game. I'm finna create me a label. Come so on. So it's now. like yin and yang. So let me ask you because there's some new cats coming up. Uh, and again, shout out, you know, Uwe, Sauce, TSF, they doing that thing. Hey, Broski, free, free Sunshine, man. Free Sunshine. Uh, no, for real, free Sunshine, y'all. Hey, Miss Megan. Peso, Peso. Miss um, Megan, let's do our reality show. So, Re Reggie Date. Miss Megan, let's run it. Miss Megan, let's run it. And speaking of Megan, I got to get your thoughts on, you know, Megan Thee Stallion. I got I to gotta ask you with the Tory Lane situation. Yeah. Megan Thee Stallion gets. Uh, get us to say assaulted by Tory Lane. He got found guilty. You know, he got sent up. But when it comes to Megan, with what she says, like, man, you know, niggas was kind of going against me, even some people in my hometown, about yeah. me getting shot. And Ain't mind you, Megan, it, it, Megan H Town. Yeah. What are your thoughts, you know what I'm saying, when you see a situation like Megan Thee Stallion and she, her going through the hate of uh, the criticism of her and Tory going through what they did all in LA, whatever? No woman should be of a threat to a man to make him want to shoot her. Man. No woman should be of a threat to a man to make him want to hit her. You know That's what I'm saying? Nice. Women w women are emotionally crucial. I, I can say their words can slice like a Jinsu knife. I can say some women are strong. I can say, uh, you know, uh, I was with my boy the other day, his girl hit him in the face. You know what I'm saying? Some women tempt men, but, but as far as you shooting a woman, man, come on, man. You know, uh, and, and so 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 he was he was wrong for that. And and when, when he go on that unit and he start his day one and his day two and he say, man, I'm in jail for shooting a woman. He may not say it out loud, but he gonna be like, damn, I should I should have kept my composure because yeah. this one thing I know too for sure. Much respect, Miss King. But when a woman put it on a man, hey. and he don't know how to shake the fact that she on to the next one. Hey, his jealousy kick in and all the stiff stuff he rap about and all the chicks that he say he got. He ain't going to be able to move on that easy. He ready to crash out. put it on you, dude. He ready to crash out. And now you want to pop her because she done put it on you. He ready to crash out. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you wanted, you should have put a ring on it. And she would have pawned the ring. And <laughs> still would have been really. <laughs> Y'all, hey, women had that effect, goddammit. Women yeah. had that effect. Yeah. Uh, speaking of another one, um... Uh, Toby Nwigwe, I want. I hope I'm saying that right. Much respect. He's coming out of H Town, just really kind of putting that lyrical thing for. Uh, shout out, he just on Transform. He just went to Transformers yeah. and turned it up. Wow. How was it for that? As far as seeing the new age of H Town come forward, as far as with the new lyrical bosses that's coming through this motherfucker. When I hear Toby, I think about frequency. Mm. His frequency is on a whole nother level. That's why he can bump into your Pharrells. That's why he can bump into your Andre 3000. You ever noticed that? Yeah. People on the same frequency rock together. That's why Lauren Hill, you know what I'm saying? That's and right. um, I like the fact that he never come off the vibration of family. Facts. He don't You're come off that vibration. With most respect, his queen facts. His queen you facts. You're going to see his kids on the road with him. You know what I'm saying? And when you vibrate on that frequency, you, you your talent will bring you before kings because they say you know what you're welcome to my home because I know if you care this so much about your family you had the same respect for mine. Yeah. Oh man, you know come what on saying? now. So 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 uh that frequency is what a lot of people are scared to get on and I want to touch on something. Yeah. Yesterday I had an epiphany. The T cells are cells in our bodies that that detect uh, uh pathogens. Pathogens are things that cause viruses. Yeah. Right now, there's a virus called attention going on in the social media, right? Come on. So, so, so when, 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 when uh, the, the, the attention virus is attacking people's people, T cells, you know what I'm saying? And, and they rather, they rather build their exterior and their external than work on their internal. So, yeah. so it's like if I get sick, you can pat my head and see if I got a fever. Yeah. Or you're going to see some measles or some bumps on me on my exterior. But it's something that needs to be happen on my internal for me to heal. So, so people are using 
social media. So so just like just like uh let's say let's say um if 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 I say something for some attention and I'm trolling or I'm clickbaiting, that attention gonna make me want to want more attention. That's a virus. Come on now. It's not only affecting me, it's gonna affect somebody else like COVID because they're gonna say, man, he it's did, I can you. do it too. Yeah, yeah. But I wanna say this. Who are going to be the T-cells? Who are going to say, man, I'm going to go against that grind? Let's go. You know what I mean? And, and this came to me yesterday. That's this fast. came to me yesterday. That's, a great, a, that's a great I analogy. I do anything about it. That's a great analogy. And, and I want to say this. You, you either affect a person or you infect a person. That is facts. And I just want to ask everybody who go on any platforms, it might be Vlad TV, it might be Say Cheese, it might be Real Life Street Stars. When you come on these platforms, you can either affect a person or you can infect a person. You know what I mean? Come on, man. And, and when you speak, let's think about our kids. I can ride in any city or state with glass house windows. Everybody can't do that. Some people got to tent up because of their words. Yeah. This is your Garden of Eden. These are your four rivers and this is your ocean, man. That is facts. So is the man thinking, so is he. And you can't, you can't cleanse yourself. I ain't no preacher. I ain't no teacher. Rock a rock, gold drops. I just drip some on you. So, so I have to ask you then because... When it comes to H Town, there is an uptick on violence in the young community as far as mm -hmm. people are losing their lives. Uh, Houston is becoming like, yeah. you know, like, a, you know, third a, world yeah. country. I mean, like, it's going down. True, true indeed. And you come from an era to where you didn't see what's about, to, you didn't see what came, you didn't see what's coming. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts when you seen like this? When you see like what's Pause. coming, y'all know right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bang, you on some New York shit? Get it, oh my lord! Get it down, get it down. Let me see. You see what's coming? Yeah, big pause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when when you see the violence in the young niggas, man, um, what are your thoughts? Uh, when you see kind of what's going down when another news pop up, Harris County, Houston, and some shit then popped off. Where you like, God damn, my city. Hey, you know what? Um. Bum B said something that was that was profound. Yeah. He said when we was younger, he said he said when 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 uh when we were younger, our parents said the things that we were doing was outlandish. Yeah. When they were younger, their parents said the same thing. We're in the information era. That's another thing I want to speak on. We're in the information era. Everything is at your disposal. When these teenagers see another teen riding the RT, you know what I'm saying, souped up challenger. They won one too, and they they, 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 you know, you when you can Google certain things and, and and find out a way to be a smarter criminal. One youngster was I was I was uh we was in the slab line, we was about ten cars deep, and one youngster stood on top of this forty thousand dollar car and said, "I've been out thirty days." I said, yeah. "You have been out what?" He either been uh, stealing Cadillac converters or scamming <laughs> for him to make enough money in thirty days to buy this car. Nick. So when you give a young fool some money, you give them confidence, you give them ego, and you give them power. And if you put power in the wrong hands, Bro. you have some self-destruction. Come on. And, and so 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 they all competing with each other. You know what I'm saying? It's like I still got my boss of the North tattooed on me because yeah. I Robert uh, De Niro and Casino was my favorite. I said I'd rather be a classy act than be a pesky. A pesky. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Facts. You know, uh, uh, you know, when times get rough, I'd rather go to the casino and be up in the, you know, sky boys watching the cameras. Yeah. Rather than be in the field. But you got some youngsters who earn their stripes off of being in the field because they say, since you don't respect me, I'm finna earn it. And I'm finna make my name ring like this. And, 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 and the choppers and the switches are they OGs because like one youngster was doing an interview the other day. Island boys and the dude say ask him some about them being gay. The I saw say, man, yeah. you, you want this interview to switch? Yeah. He had power in his hands. Facts. But you got some OGs like Mike Tyson gonna say, you got me fucked up. And, and grab that gun because he realized, hey man, it, it, you can shoot this gun. I got bullet marks on me and kind of 15 bullet holes. If God ready for me, he ready for me. But but, but at the same time, these youngsters are hiding behind this because this is their power. They hide behind yeah. money because that's their power. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, and, and as the world turns, you notice that spirituality is leaving out the window because people want the thrill over the real. Yeah. That's facts. And, and, and with people working so hard, 
Everybody not going to church on Sunday like they used to. Not, not they, at they all. They zooming. I, I'm from the fellowship era. era. You know yeah, what I'm saying? You gotta where shake my, hands. You where, gotta... Your, where your grandma look at you like, move your head, move your home. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah, for real. Now, 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 you know, kids don't go to church because we we the new generation. So I challenge us to say, hey, at least at least give them us at least plant the seed. At least plant the seed. You know. So when you see a situation like um, it comes across your headline, uh, you know, Migos rapper Takeoff mm -hmm. shot in Houston. Mm -hmm. Is it more like, man, it's it's already wild, wild west out here? Do you expect things like that, or you feel like that is an abnormal thing to happen in H Town? If I was Migos, they would talk. They would call me Takeoff, Clearport Jet when it's time to take off. She called Watchway every time she take off. You know what I'm saying? But but Takeoff was one of my favorite rappers. You know what I'm saying? On now. And um, I like Takeoff because he had a, a, a he had a, a individual persona about himself, and you know, some people say sacrifice. Some people say this, that, and the other. But I was looking at a sermon. You know, God will use your imperfections, and God will use a crisis to make you play, pray a specific prayer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so for whatever reason that happened in the city, I can say if Charlie Moe came to Houston, Charlie Moe making it back to Dallas. <laughs> Come on now. I'm going to say that like that. Come on now. Because that's broski. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Like, and uh, if I got them. some hyenas around me, sit your little bitch ass down. Because yeah. <laughs> when T.I. came to the bricks, I said Tip. I didn't say T.I., I said Tip. I said a name that he familiar with from family. Yeah. I said Bang Head to let him know he was coming. And now here's some youngsters over here talking about, oh, we got to rob his ass. Now the fuck y'all ain't. This was doing a little flip shit? Or? This, no, this, this, was, no, this was when, uh, this was. All Star Weekend in Houston. Okay, yeah, yeah. I you remember. know what I'm saying? I remember. And, and Trade the Truth brought him to Houston. You I know remember. what I'm saying? I remember. But 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 Trade the Truth brought him to, to the bricks. T.I. was so cozy. J Dog was there. T.I. is still here on this earth today. Without question. You know what I'm saying? And, and much respect to OG. You know what I'm saying? Much respect to Junior. You know what I'm saying? Much respect to Jazz. But if I invite you to my house. You making it back home, man. Making it back home. Man, hey, I ain't scared of the boogie man. <laughs> you come to my house, you making it back home, man. Come on now. Man, real, come on, real game getting spit. Um, uh, when it comes to, you know, I believe Drake just came through Houston and also Beyonce, they brought their concerts. Drake just moved to Houston. Drake just said, I bought a house in Houston. Yes, sir. He's Rick about Ross, to sell the economy. 50 Cent. 50 Cent just bought a house. Yeah. Rick Ross. Mm -hmm. uh, Beyonce. She 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 took a mama by her old house yeah. to show like there was yeah. What does Houston look like in the music scene in about the next five years? Would you say is it rivaling Atlanta? Man, we, we uh Houston and Dallas. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Houston look, and look, Dallas. Look, 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 I'm looking at a, a YouTube a YouTube uh show. Uh, uh, the youngsters going around uh me, the the cities with the most millionaires. Yeah, yeah. Dallas was number eight before, way before Houston. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I'm a, I'm a Texas boy in my, in my candy car. You know what I'm saying? That's why I said <laughs> yeah, that. The day yeah. by polo horse for that hill figure. You know what I'm saying? I'll rock some hill figure if I just want to, if it match. Come but on. But at the same time. <laughs> Come on now. You know, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm more Texas. I'm more Texas because I'm a speaker. I'm, I'm a spokesman for, for, for my state. You know what I'm saying? Facts. But But uh, Houston is looking real good. Uh, we having more uh, videos being, uh, more movies being shot. Slim yeah. and them just done the Double Cup movie. Yeah. Uh, my boy Boss Life Dre just done the Bricks. Check that out on on Tubi. All right. And, and I said, bro, can I be in the Bricks too? I want a character called Hollywood Fifty. <laughs> Come on now, Hollywood hey, Fifty. You don't rub that shit. Bring him in. Pop that shit. <laughs> but but but, but um, it, 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 it's it's a good time to capitalize off your creative thinking. Yes. You know, and um, the eyes is on eyes is on Texas. Yes, the eyes on the eyes is on Texas, and, and, and um. We we definitely should use our artistic development and our know how to to just bring them to our scenery. There you to go. To bring them to our scenery. There you, you know? go. But it, they they trying to ban swangers though. Oh oh, it, it, was, a, yeah. it was. Is 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 that is that a, is that a lost cause? Like what the you fuck? Know, Trey said you can't ban the truth. You can't ban the swangers either. Because uh, it's a rule that if they stick out past the mirror, technically they say they're illegal. But when we be in our slab parades, this is what we do. Whoever. Is in the front. We are gonna shake, shake to the right. The traffic right here get blocked, and the other cars come through swinging, and we all over here on the median, and that's what we do. And the money for the ticket gonna be on the dashboard, sir. 
officer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. On the dashboard, nigga. Let's take okay. care of it now. You know what I'm saying? Here go my car. Because so, then what we do in Houston. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, Come so, on now. I can't ban what can't get banned. Swaggers. TWW. Let's go, go, man. Tell me, pal. All right, 50 man. For those that do want to make, let, shout out the book again, man, if you don't mind. Shout out as far as even uh, any projects you have coming up. It just, again, you you just on a positive energy. You can't ban the box caprices either. Yo, yeah, you cannot folks. ban the box caprices. You man. The hoes, as a matter of fact, the value's going up on them hoes. What the fuck you know what we talking saying? about? Yeah. Um, tell them about the book again. Tell them as far as just even the energy you on right now, man. Again, again, it's a blessing to have you in Dallas. Uh, again, the second home to you. You were national. So, you were so. national. National treasure, literally. Man, this tell us about home, what you got man. going on, man. As far as the book, tell them, you know, just what you got going on, you too. I want to say shout out to OG Cottonmouth, man. I always to OG. pay homage, man. Shout out to OG Twisted Black. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Twisted Black. He For free, real. finally free. For real, I, I always pay homage, man. Um, the 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 what, what I'm on right now is like once again when when I was in the rehab and it says more to life than being sober. I realized I could be a messed up. I could be a millionaire with a messed up mentality. You know what I mean? So, 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 anywhere I go, I realize that my energy hit the room before I do. Because we are made of frequencies. We're made of atoms, protons, neutrons, nitrogen, and oxygen. You know what I'm saying? So, 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 what we put, and this is another thing, people stay to talk about the universe and what you put in the universe, and the universe did this. Well, that's a creator to the universe. You know what I'm saying? Don't skip over the creator. We can't serve the creation and not, serve the, and not acknowledge the creator. So, so basically what I'm saying is this, before I hit th this, this, this floor, I set my tone downstairs. Talk you know what I'm saying? It. Before I got to Dallas, I already put on my armor and say, let my meaning be pleasing to the most high. You know what I'm saying? Come on now. Come so, on so, now. So, so, so your frequency vibrate. You know what I'm saying? You ever seen a hurric uh, earthquake? It do like this. You know what I'm saying? That's why butterflies can detect it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, so, uh, there was a man walking uh, uh, his son on a donkey. And um, the people said, you're going to spoil him. You older than him. He should be walking you. So the man got off the, the man took his son off the donkey and he got on the donkey. So he got up the road and some other people was like, what does it look like for this young boy to be pulling a grown man on a donkey? So they both got off the donkey. So now they both walking the donkey, right? The donkey carrying these goods. And they said, how cool are y'all to make this donkey carry all these things? Mm. But more of that story is no matter what you do, somebody going to always have something to say. But internally, set your frequency on, you know what I'm saying, a positive vibration. Come on now. And that's what they're going to get. You can be quiet, but if I walk in a room, like like uh, one day I was tripping on TDC, you know what I'm saying? I would trip out. I would trip out. I would trip out and, 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 and be ready for the consequences. But my boy... My blood partner, he say, twin, check that shit at the door. You're going to have all of us on lockdown this bitch. Yeah. I had to realize that I got a choice to check it at the door. And waking up positive is a choice. So I put on my armor every day. Man, I got to say it because we talked off camera again uh, from your posts on social media, from just your energy. And again, I don't want to say it's like a new twin, but bro, the positive energy that you bring and the positive energy that you come with, the positive energy that you're trying to spill out to others. May I tell you why? Go ahead, please. Uh, uh, my, my boy from Galveston, he said, twin, look at my ID card. I said, what? He said, look at that. And it said 3L. He had three life sentences. <laughs> but he woke up and found out. He found a reason to be positive every day because he could be negative and they put him in G5 in this animal cage where they slide your trays through and you never come out. Or he could be positive and stay around and some action and use the phone and see people and see women walking around and, and you know what I'm saying? So I said, man, I'm playing with I'm playing with life itself. Cause he said, twin, I love you, be you know they okay. I don't like people calling me bitch. That's no thing, man. Y'all, hey man, how we go from calling out how we go to call out women, bro, and saying my part of that's my bitch. Boy, y'all, I love. But, but, um, <laughs> For real. Yeah, man. But 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 uh, when I saw those brothers in there who ain't going home. I said, man, I got to get out here and figure this out. It ain't going to be catered to me. But I, I I know I have to change my mind frame before my circumstance could change. Not For definitely. Um, there's a person that I, I definitely want to shout out myself um, out of H-Town, man. This young, I believe he's Mexican, man. His name is Kunal AFTC, man. His, his Instagram is at Kunal, K-U-N-A-L, AFTC, man. Trey, Trey just went to holler at him the other day, man. But he's... um. He's dying. He's on hospice 
uh, I saw for that. diabetes. I saw that. Bless yeah. that brother, man. Yeah, Bless yeah. That and brother. he's like, he's speaking so much positive energy in this world yeah. that he's like, man, your time is finite. Don't waste it. Yeah, yeah. Be smart about your choices. Don't let no time frame linger. And I really just kind of like just really catered to his message because I'm like, it lets me know that let me not play with time. Let me not play with For my sure. opportunity. For sure. Let me not play with chances. So I definitely want to shout him out. And it also just goes into the positive energy that you're speaking on that, you know, it takes one to build one, you know, and what you give out is what you're going to get and what you get is what you give out. So I definitely thank you for even just bringing the energy that you came in with sure. before we even got started. Man, it was already on a level. Uh, I, I, I figure we run congruent because when I think of the word viral, I think of the word virus. And, um, you know what I'm saying? Well, the, the wrong virus could go viral. You know what I'm saying? So so I don't want to be attached to that. Come you on you know what I'm saying? I want to just ask people, what are you loyal to? They be like loyalty over everything. If my partner say, hey, man, come go with me to hell, I'm going to say, bro, I'm going to let me out the car. So, man, come on now. With that being said. With that right. being said, I like I like to say, you know, we didn't start off like this, but I'm going to stay on this one part right here because it's, uh you know, we got in the building, man, it's 50, 50 twin. Got anaconda skins in my bins. Wait, wait. Peep he gave through 50 lids. Pass me the damn ink, ink pen. English. Come on, man. As the ink start to drop out, even Come more on, harder man. phrases like. Let's go, hey. man. We got him in the building, man. 50 50 twin. We got to say it, man. You are a real life street Azul star. Jazz and Sugar Lounge. Oh, let's talk about him. Azul Jazz and Sugar Lounge. You know what I'm saying? Shout out, Jazz. Still sucker. Oh, man. It's going down. One of the hardest promotion teams. If you need something coming to Dallas, a class act, how let's go. Club Allure. Promotion. Uh, Club Allure. Uh, it's about to go down Club Allure every first Sunday yes, of every month. Yes, sir. It, it's, it's the most popping motherfucking spot. We gonna be back in the building. And, and they on their ground. Turn man. it the fuck up. Need a, need a, need a drum at home. <laughs> need a drum at home. We having a great old time. Goddamn it, 50-50 twin. You all realize too, so let's go. Let's love J.D. Hall. I love you. Ah.